My name is Aaron and I'm the Director of Broadcast Operations for Chess.com. And in this video, I am going to show you how to start streaming chess on Twitch or YouTube or anywhere you want. So here we go. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is download your streaming software and I recommend OBS Studio. So just go to obsproject.com slash download and choose your operating system, Windows, Mac, or Linux, download the installer and install the program. Once you've done that and you've opened it up, you're gonna have a program that looks just like this. This window here is gonna be your actual scene of what's live. Here's a list of scenes when you create new scenes. These will be the sources of the items that are gonna be in that scene. Your audio will show up over here and you can get into your settings on the bottom right here by clicking settings. I'm gonna run through some initial settings very quickly. So in this first screen, you can check the box for show confirmation dialog before starting streams and show confirmation dialog when stopping streams. That's a good way to make sure you don't just start streaming and you don't even realize it. In the stream tab here, you'll choose where your destination is. Are you gonna to stream to Twitch, YouTube, or another destination? Uh, if it requires a custom server and stream key, you would just select custom from that drop-down menu and put it there. But all the popular services like Twitch and YouTube are already in there. Let's say you wanna connect your Twitch account. Then you can actually click connect account and an authorization page will come up. And if you're logged into Twitch, then you'll be able to connect it directly with OBS. In the output tab, I recommend going to output mode and changing it from simple to advanced. Go to the encoder dropdown. And if you have a hardware encoder, like the one displayed here, I have a H.264 and the H stands for hardware, then you'll click that one. If you don't have that option, then any available option like X264 is fine. Then you may see an option for bitrate. I don't recommend going above 6,000 here. And if you're not sure what your internet connection can handle as far as your upload rate, then maybe start with a lower value, like 1,500. Because chess is mostly solid colors, you don't have to worry about quality as much as stability. The audio tab is where you will set up incoming audio from your PC as well as from a microphone. For the sample rate, I recommend 48. And for channels, I recommend mono. If it's set to stereo, you may have some viewers complain that they can only hear you through the left side of their headphones. Setting it to mono fixes that. If you want your audience to hear sound from your PC, then just click desktop audio, change that to default. You can also set it to your headphones or any other direct device that outputs that audio. For a microphone, click the first microphone slash auxiliary audio and find your microphone. In the video tab, Set your base canvas resolution and output resolution to 1920 by 1080, which should be an available option in both dropdowns. I also recommend that you only use about 30 frames per second rather than 60, because initially you just wanna make sure your stream is stable and this will reduce the stress on your system. In the advanced tab, if you have an option to change process priority, change that from normal to above normal. This tells your computer to pay a little bit more attention to OBS. Click apply and okay. And those settings should work in most cases. Now you can also see that our audio has appeared in the audio mixer. Mic slash auxiliary should be the microphone that you've selected. And you can adjust the level by bringing this slider up and down. I recommend that you don't allow your microphone to reach any farther than just inside the yellow here. If it reaches into the red, you're probably too loud. A good way to test to make sure your audio is coming in clearly is to actually record it. You can click start recording and then speak for a few seconds and then click stop recording and then watch the file on your computer. To make sure you know where that recording is going, click settings, output, recording, and then check your recording path. You can also change this so that the recordings go where you want. I recommend that for recording format, you change it to MP4 on a PC or MOV on a Mac. Any audio being played through your PC, which could include music, videos, game sounds, or anything else that you would hear in your own headphones or speakers will end up in here. And you can control that audio level the same way. If you want to mute, just click the speaker button at the bottom, and now they're muted. So now let's capture your chessboard on chess.com. I recommend that if you have any other tabs open, that you close them. So the chess.com is the only tab in that browser window. You can have other browsers open, but just have those on a separate window off to the side. Click play, play online, 
and now you've got your chessboard. Let's go to OBS, click the plus below the sources list and add a window capture. You can even label this live chess or anything you want to remember what it is. Click the window dropdown and find the window for your chessboard. If you selected it correctly, you should see the preview here, then click OK. And now your chessboard is in your scene. You can resize the window by grabbing a corner point and clicking and dragging, or a side point. You can crop the window by holding the Alt key, grabbing a point, and dragging. and move the window by clicking anywhere in the window and dragging. Click anywhere to hide the bounding box. And if you like the position it's in, click the lock on the source in the source list. Now we've got a nice big chessboard. Maybe next we'll add a background. Once you have the image file for your background, click the plus in the sources list and choose image. You can add a label or just click OK. Click browse and find the file and click OK. Now click a corner point or a side point to fill the screen. When it's in position, click the lock so that you can't accidentally move it if you click and drag. Now we want the background behind our chessboard, so click the source of the background and click the down arrow and it'll move the layer underneath the chessboard layer. You can also click and drag sources to do the same. Now let's add your webcam. Click the plus and video capture device. You can label it or just click OK. Now click the drop down and choose your webcam. You should get a preview of the webcam if it's connected properly. My webcam is behind me, but yours should be in front of you. It's a long story. Once you've got the webcam you want, click OK. And now you can grab a point and resize it. Place it where you like. If you like the placement, click the lock. Some webcams have a built-in microphone, and you may notice that you now have an additional item in the audio mixer for the built-in microphone. If you don't plan on using that, and you have a separate microphone already added, I would recommend muting, clicking the cog, and clicking hide. And now you've removed anything that you don't need. When you're ready to start streaming, just click Start Streaming, and a confirmation dialog will pop up if you check that box that I recommended in the settings. Just to remind you, go to settings and check the box for show confirmation dialog when starting streams and stopping streams. If you click start streaming, but it's not connected, go to the stream tab in settings and make sure that you've connected your account. You can look up the individual settings for whichever platform you're planning on streaming to on those websites. OBS automatically saves your progress. So you can close OBS and it will remember everything that you set up in your last session. If you want to be absolutely sure, you can click Scene Collection, Export, and save a backup file that you can import later if something goes wrong and a change is not saved. But OBS Studio is very reliable, so you should be good. This is really more for an extreme case like a power outage where your work doesn't end up being saved. I'd say go ahead and export after you've made a significant number of changes or done a lot of work just to make sure that you don't lose any of that precious work. I have a YouTube channel as well where I can teach you a little bit more advanced uh, techniques for streaming and recording content. So go check me out, youtube.com slash Hawaii. We'll put a link in the description as well. And uh, thank you for watching. Good luck.